my name is Michael Ostegorski, and this is Princess Tara. I spent 25 years as an academic historian writing uh, books and articles that nobody ever bothered to read. If you Google my name, you can see the listing on Google. So after I retired, I decided maybe I should try writing something that people would like to read. <laughs> so, you know, people always tell you to write what you know. And after I retired, I started getting parrots, and so I know parrots. And it just turns out I have to live with a parrot that's a witch. So I wrote a book. Blue Tara or the Hyacinth Macaw, or how is the Hyacinth Macaw like a Tibetan goddess? And we put our part of chapter one. Introduction. I originally got a parrot because an old black guy with parrots told me it would help me pick up chicks. And I don't need the poultry kind. I picked out a parrot at this old, guy, old black guy's bird store here in Seattle that was big, blue, and loud, and a princess. The loudness I didn't learn about until it was too late, but that was the least of my problems. First of all, it turns out I didn't actually pick out the parrot. The parrot picked me. Not only was the parrot big, blue, and loud, and a princess, the parrot was a witch. Not a figurative or allegorical witch, a literal witch. A witch of the spellcasting kind, the abracadabra kind. A witch with a coffee addiction. <laughs> Once I entered the bird store that the parrot cast a spell, the kind of spell that caused me to open my wallet for a big, blue, loud witch. The kind of witch that didn't abide with girlfriends, <laughs> the kind of witch that didn't abide with not getting her away. The kind of witch that turned out to be my guardian angel and a proverbial albatross around my neck at the same time. A witch named Princess Tara. Chapter 1, Part 1. Driving makes me hungry. Driving up Aurora Avenue in North Seattle, I craved a cookie. Any kind. I just wanted a cookie. I wasn't particular when it came to my cookie obsession. I pulled into the PCC parking lot. PCC Puget Consumers Cooperative. One of the many lefty cooperatives that sprung up around Seattle back in the 50s and 60s of the last century, like gooey ducks after a hard rain. Maybe not like gooey ducks. Gooey ducks aren't flora or fungi. Gooey ducks are giant mollusks, the macaws of the mollusk world. I like to throw gooey ducks out in conversation because what separates true Seattleites from the countless immigrants flooding the city to work at Amazon or Star Sucks or Microsoft is knowing how to say gooey duck correctly. Go back to cookies. I just wanted a simple cookie, oatmeal raisin, chocolate chip, ginger snack, didn't matter. I have a weakness for cookies, I admit it. Snickerdoodle is my favorite, and PCC makes one of the best snickerdoodles in Seattle. I parked and walked up to the door thinking cookies. Suddenly I started thinking parrots. <laughs> guy standing at the door stopped me. He was hard to miss. Besides the fact, he was standing in the doorway blocking my entrance. A stunningly brilliant blue and yellow macaw, a blue and yellow parrot perched on his shoulder, properly, properly called a blue and gold macaw, I, I later learned. One of the largest and most brightly colored of the macaw. Hard to miss, especially when there's one right in front of you perched on the guy's shoulder, blocking the entrance to the store that sells the cookies you're currently craving. <laughs> on this day, I knew nothing about parrots. I'm an historian, got a PhD in history and another PhD in archaeology, so I know PhDs. I've gone through life collecting academic degrees, like some people collect cars. I've got a bunch of them, bachelor's, master's, you name it, certificates I can't even remember now. <laughs> Pretty useless. I never enjoyed a particularly stellar academic career. I wrote a lot, mostly reports people never read, <coughs> published some. Traveled for research to field work. I had my ups and downs, mostly just downs now that I think about it. I could never achieve tenure, so I bounced around living out of a suitcase as an adjunct professor. Idaho, Oregon, Alaska, California, finally Seattle. But it kept me from making pizzas or washing dishes for a living. That time. Okay. Not that I didn't make pizzas or wash dishes for a living while I was collecting my TV, but don't get me started. One more paragraph. I can regale you with countless stories about Seattle history until your eyes glaze over. But parrots, on this day, the day I had my heart set on a cookie, I didn't know a damn thing about parrots. Sure, I knew people with parrots. You and Guy Lee went everywhere with a service parrot perched on his shoulder. To the gas station, grocery store, everywhere. But he's strange. People with parrots seem stranger than most. Occasionally, I see people walking around the Ballard Farmer's Market in my Seattle neighborhood with parrots on their shoulders. My mom had parakeets when I was growing up. Remember them fluttering around the house and landing on my head. Mostly I remember them pooping in my hair. Then mom would make me wash my hair out after she corralled the parakeets back in their cage. My early association with birds was not uniformly positive. <laughs> <laughs> this is available for free on Smashwords and almost free on Amazon. And book two will be out this summer. <laughs>